Top 25 Refrigeration Interview Questions and Answers In this video, we will explore the top 25 refrigeration interview questions and their corresponding answers. These questions are essential for anyone preparing for a career in refrigeration and HVAC systems. We aim to provide insights into both technical knowledge and practical experience required in the industry. By reviewing these questions, you can enhance your confidence and readiness for your next job interview. 1. What experience do you have in refrigeration systems? I have extensive experience working with various refrigeration systems, including commercial and residential units. My background includes installation, troubleshooting, and maintenance of a wide range of systems such as walk-in coolers, freezers, and HVAC systems. I've worked with different refrigerants and have a strong understanding of their properties and handling requirements. Through hands-on experience and technical training, I've developed the skills needed to diagnose issues promptly and implement effective repairs, ensuring systems operate efficiently and reliably. 2. Can you explain the basic principles of refrigeration? Refrigeration operates on the principle of removing heat from a designated area to lower its temperature. This is achieved through a closed-loop system that includes a refrigerant, which absorbs and releases heat as it circulates. The four main processes are evaporation, condensation, compression, and expansion. During evaporation, the refrigerant absorbs heat, turning from liquid to gas. The compressor then pressurizes this gas, raising its temperature. In the condenser, the gas releases heat and condenses back into a liquid. Finally, the expansion valve reduces the pressure, allowing the refrigerant to cool before returning to the evaporator. This cycle repeats continuously. 3. How do you troubleshoot a refrigeration unit that is not cooling properly? When troubleshooting a refrigeration unit that is not cooling properly, start by checking the thermostat settings to ensure they are correct. Inspect the condenser coils for dirt or obstructions that may impede airflow. Next, examine the evaporator coils for frost buildup, indicating a possible airflow issue or low refrigerant levels. Verify that the compressor is functioning and listen for unusual noises. Additionally, check electrical connections and components like relays and capacitors. If necessary, use pressure gauges to assess refrigerant levels and ensure the system is charged correctly. Document any findings for future reference. 4. What safety precautions do you follow when working with refrigerants? When working with refrigerants, I prioritize safety by wearing appropriate personal protective equipment, PPE, such as gloves, goggles, and respiratory protection. I ensure the work area is well ventilated to prevent inhalation of harmful gases. I also check for leaks using electronic leak detectors before commencing any repairs. It's essential to familiarize myself with the Material Safety Data Sheets, MSDS, for the specific refrigerants being handled. Additionally, I always follow proper recovery procedures to prevent environmental contamination and comply with regulations concerning refrigerant handling. 5. Are you familiar with EPA regulations regarding refrigerant handling? Yes, I am familiar with EPA regulations concerning refrigerant handling. The EPA mandates that technicians must be certified under the Section 608 of the Clean Air Act to handle refrigerants. This includes proper recovery, recycling, and disposal methods to minimize environmental impact. Technicians are required to follow leak detection and repair regulations, ensuring that any leaks are addressed promptly to prevent harmful refrigerant emissions. Compliance with these regulations not only protects the environment but also ensures the safety of workers and the public. Understanding these guidelines is crucial for responsible refrigerant management. 6. What tools do you commonly use for refrigeration repairs? In refrigeration repairs, commonly used tools include refrigerant gauges, multimeters, and leak detectors. Refrigerant gauges help in measuring pressure levels, while multimeters are essential for testing electrical components. For detecting leaks, electronic leak detectors or soap solution can be used effectively. Additionally, wrenches, screwdrivers, and vacuum pumps are crucial for system assembly and disassembly. Safety equipment such as gloves and goggles is also necessary to protect against refrigerants and other hazards encountered during repairs. Proper tools ensure efficient and safe handling of refrigeration systems. 7. How do you diagnose a refrigerant leak? Diagnosing a refrigerant leak involves several systematic steps. First, visually inspect the system for any obvious signs of oil residue, which often indicates a leak. Next, utilize electronic leak detectors to identify small leaks that may not be visible. Another method is to apply a soap solution to suspect areas bubbles will form at the leak site. If necessary, pressure testing with nitrogen can help locate larger leaks. Always ensure that the system is evacuated and safe to work on before conducting tests. Identifying and fixing leaks promptly is crucial for system efficiency and environmental safety. 8. Can you explain the difference between ATXV and a capillary tube system? ATXV, thermostatic expansion valve, controls the flow of refrigerant based on temperature and pressure, allowing for precise management of superheat. This system adjusts the refrigerant flow dynamically according to the cooling load, promoting efficiency and better performance. In contrast, a capillary tube system relies on a fixed diameter tube to regulate refrigerant flow, which does not adapt to varying load conditions. 
Capillary tubes are simpler and less expensive but can lead to inefficiencies and less effective cooling in fluctuating environments. 9. What steps do you take to perform preventive maintenance on a refrigeration unit? Preventive maintenance on a refrigeration unit involves several key steps. First, I start by inspecting the system for any visible signs of wear or damage. This includes checking the condenser and evaporator coils for cleanliness and removing any debris. Next, I verify the refrigerant levels and check for leaks using electronic leak detectors. I also test and clean electrical components, ensuring all connections are secure. Additionally, I replace air filters and check airflow to maintain efficiency. Lastly, I review the unit's performance data, making necessary adjustments to optimize operation. 10. How do you recover, recycle, and reclaim refrigerants? Recovering, recycling, and reclaiming refrigerants involve different processes to ensure environmental safety and compliance. To recover refrigerants, use a recovery machine to extract the refrigerant from the system into a recovery cylinder, ensuring no leaks occur during the process. Recycling involves cleaning the recovered refrigerant to remove contaminants, often done on site with a recycling unit. Reclaiming is a more advanced process that purifies refrigerants to the original specifications, usually performed by certified facilities. Each step requires adherence to EPA regulations and proper handling techniques to prevent harm to the environment. 11. What are the common causes of compressor failure? Compressor failure can stem from several issues. Common causes include overheating due to inadequate lubrication or airflow restrictions, which can lead to excessive wear. Electrical problems, such as voltage fluctuations or short circuits, may cause the compressor to fail. Additionally, refrigerant issues like low charge or contamination can impair performance. Mechanical failures, such as broken valves or crankshaft damage, are also significant contributors. Regular maintenance and monitoring can help identify potential issues before they lead to compressor failure, ensuring longevity and efficiency of the refrigeration system. 12. How do you test electrical components in a refrigeration system? Testing electrical components in a refrigeration system involves a series of steps to ensure proper functionality. First, turn off the power supply to the system for safety. Use a multimeter to check the continuity of wires and components, such as thermostats, relays, and contactors. Measure voltage at various points to confirm that electrical signals are reaching the intended components. Inspect connections for corrosion or damage, which can cause operational issues. Finally, evaluate the compressor and fan motor by checking their resistance and ensuring that they operate when power is restored. 13. What is superheat and subcooling, and how do you measure them? Superheat refers to the temperature of a vapor above its boiling point at a given pressure, indicating how much heat is added to the refrigerant after it has completely evaporated. Subcooling is the cooling of a refrigerant below its condensation temperature at a specific pressure, ensuring the refrigerant is fully liquid before entering the expansion device. To measure superheat, you need the suction line temperature and the corresponding pressure to find the saturation temperature. Accurate measurements are crucial for system efficiency and performance. 14. Have you worked with both commercial and residential refrigeration systems? Yes, I have experience working with both commercial and residential refrigeration systems. In residential settings, I typically handle standard refrigerators, freezers, and small cooling units, focusing on repairs and preventive maintenance. For commercial systems, I work with larger units such as walk-in coolers and ice machines. These systems often require more complex troubleshooting and maintenance procedures due to their size and usage demands. Each has its unique challenges, and my diverse experience enables me to adapt my skills effectively across various applications. 15. How do you handle a system with icing on the evaporator coil? When handling a system with icing on the evaporator coil, the first step is to turn off the system to prevent further damage. Next, I inspect the air filters, ensuring they are clean and not obstructing airflow. I then check the blower fan to confirm it is functioning properly. Low refrigerant levels can also cause icing, so I check for leaks and assess the refrigerant charge. If the defrost timer is faulty, I may need to replace it. After addressing these issues, I initiate a defrost cycle before restarting the system, monitoring for any recurring problems. 16. What is the role of a condenser in a refrigeration system? The condenser is a crucial component in a refrigeration system, responsible for expelling heat from the refrigerant as it transitions from a gas to a liquid state. As the refrigerant flows through the condenser coils, it releases heat to the surrounding air or water, allowing it to condense into a high-pressure liquid. This process is essential for maintaining the efficiency of the refrigeration cycle. The condenser also plays a key role in regulating system pressure, ensuring that the refrigerant can effectively circulate back to the evaporator, where it absorbs heat again, completing the cycle. Proper functioning of the condenser is vital for overall system performance. 17. How do you charge a refrigeration system properly? Charging a refrigeration system properly involves several steps. First, ensure the system is off and check for any leaks. Next, connect the manifold gauge set to the service ports. Start the system and let it run to stabilize. Monitor the pressure readings against the manufacturer's specifications. If the system requires refrigerant, 
Add it slowly while observing the pressure gauge. Use the superheat method for expansion valve systems or the subcooling method for fixed metering devices to determine the correct charge. Always ensure to follow safety protocols when handling refrigerants. 18. Can you read and interpret refrigeration system schematics? Yes, I can read and interpret refrigeration system schematics. Understanding these diagrams is crucial for diagnosing issues within the system. Schematics typically illustrate components such as compressors, condensers, evaporators, and expansion devices. They provide information on how these parts are interconnected, including the refrigerant flow path. By analyzing the symbols and lines, I can determine the operation of the system and identify potential problems. This skill allows me to efficiently troubleshoot and ensure proper functionality during repairs or maintenance. 19. What are the signs of a failing condenser fan motor? A failing condenser fan motor can exhibit several key signs. First, you may notice unusual noises such as grinding or squealing, indicating wear or damage. Additionally, if the fan does not run at all or runs intermittently, this suggests a motor issue. Overheating of the condenser unit is another telltale sign, as the lack of proper airflow can lead to elevated temperatures. Lastly, if you observe a decrease in cooling efficiency, it may be related to the fan motor not operating correctly, causing the system to struggle in dissipating heat effectively. 20. How do you ensure proper airflow in a refrigeration system? To ensure proper airflow in a refrigeration system, first, check the air filters and clean or replace them regularly to maintain efficiency. Ensure that the evaporator and condenser coils are clean and free of debris, as this can restrict airflow. Additionally, inspect the ductwork for any obstructions or leaks that could impede airflow. Verify that the blower fan is functioning correctly and is set to the appropriate speed. Finally, ensure that vents and registers are open and unobstructed, allowing for unobstructed air circulation throughout the system. 21. What are the differences between R22 and R410A refrigerants? R22 and R410A are both refrigerants used in air conditioning in refrigeration systems, but they have key differences. R22, a hydrochlorofluorocarbon, HCFC, is being phased out due to its ozone-depleting potential, while R410A, a hydrofluorocarbon, HFC, is considered more environmentally friendly as it does not harm the ozone layer. R410A operates at a higher pressure than R22, which requires system components to be designed specifically for it. Additionally, R410A has better energy efficiency and cooling capacity compared to R22, making it a preferred choice in modern HVAC systems. 22. How do you handle a refrigeration emergency call? In a refrigeration emergency call, I first assess the situation by gathering information from the client about the symptoms and any recent changes. Next, I prioritize safety by ensuring the area is safe to enter and advising the client on any precautions. After that, I quickly travel to the site with essential tools and equipment. Upon arrival, I perform a preliminary inspection to identify the issue. I communicate with the client throughout the process, explaining findings and potential solutions. My goal is to restore functionality efficiently while maintaining clear communication with the client. 23. What software or tools do you use for system diagnostics? In my work with refrigeration systems, I utilize various software and diagnostic tools. Commonly, I rely on digital multimeters for electrical diagnostics, pressure gauges for refrigerant levels, and thermometers to measure temperatures accurately. Additionally, I use specialized software, such as HVAC diagnostic apps, that provide real-time data analysis and troubleshooting tips. This technology allows me to efficiently pinpoint issues, track performance metrics, and maintain optimal system operation, ensuring that I deliver high-quality service to my clients. 24. How do you stay updated with the latest refrigeration technologies? Staying updated with the latest refrigeration technologies involves multiple strategies. I regularly attend industry seminars and workshops, which provide insights into new advancements and best practices. Subscribing to technical journals and online forums helps me stay informed about emerging trends and innovations. I also participate in online courses and certifications that focus on new technologies and efficient systems. Networking with other professionals in the field allows for knowledge sharing and discussing practical applications of new techniques. Engaging with manufacturers' updates and product releases is equally essential for understanding the latest equipment and tools available. 25. Can you describe a challenging refrigeration repair you successfully completed? In a recent project, I encountered a commercial refrigeration unit that was not maintaining proper temperatures. After thorough diagnostics, I discovered a malfunctioning expansion valve and a refrigerant leak in the evaporator coil. The repair involved replacing the expansion valve, carefully locating the leak using electronic leak detectors, and then patching the coil. The challenge was compounded by the tight space and limited accessibility. After making the repairs, I recharged the system and performed temperature checks to ensure optimal performance. The unit has been running efficiently since the repair. As we wrap up our exploration of the top 25 refrigeration interview questions and answers, we hope this guide has equipped you with valuable insights to excel in your upcoming interviews. 
Understanding these key concepts will not only boost your confidence but also enhance your knowledge in the refrigeration field. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more informative content. Your support helps us continue to provide valuable resources for your career development. Thank you for watching.